All right, guys, today is July 20th, 2019, and here is the next update to my pepper series. It is extremely hot outside right now, and there's a lot of noise going on because uh, I think the neighbor is doing the fences. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go through and show you some of the plants and what they look like right now. And uh, there are lots of fruits that are ready to be picked. And I'm a little bit behind because I've been so busy. So anyway, here is the first plant. And this is the Linzo that came from Hydroponic. And this guy is just ridiculous. There's lots and lots of flowers. And there's a few fruits that, uh, that are sticking see here but uh, lots of them are like falling off because the heat is just so crazy and if I don't water these every day they get really dry and they become droopy so yeah it's uh it's the heat is just really really too much right now but uh they're still doing okay and here is my super Pekin and I'm still fighting the birds um, to pick some of these pods off before they get them. You see here, they already got into that one. So there's one left, so I need to get this before they, the birds get them. So um, the, the, the cool thing about this particular variety is that they have very few seeds. I mean, in here, there are probably two seeds. So um, it's very difficult to collect seeds from... Uh, from this variety I picked a bunch of fruits and I, j I just got like maybe 10 seeds but uh, it's really really hot I did a review on this already and man that thing made my stomach hurt so that is the uh, super Pekin all right next here is a small s Linzo cross with my sangria and even though it is in a so small cup it's actually producing a good amount of peppers for me to use and see these are also have very few seeds so it's, it's really nice a good variety to uh, to grow it tastes great very sweet but also very spicy all right and here is what the arugula bed looks like it's uh, getting to the end of the cycle so I'm saving these for seeds and in here I have some uh, melons which I'm really really excited about I'm gonna show you some that I got uh, really big melons from and uh, there's a few in here so these are like honey kiss melon they're one of my favorite and I also saved this because the bees really love the flowers and also the bunnies they love uh, eating these arugula so they kind of leave my other plants alone sometimes so I, I just let them have it because um, it's <laughs> It's getting to the end of the season and they, they actually stopped bothering my other plants. And here is a watermelon. And I have been having problem with uh, birds and stuff like that. They're eating all my pears. So when I wrapped these around, it actually worked. So I'm, I went around and did uh, a bunch to all of my other uh, fruits. I'll show you in a bit. So here are some melons. I hope those will take and become large melons. They get really, really big. So I'll show you how big they get. Okay, and here is what they should be or what size they should be. This is the honey kiss. And they get really massive, like almost watermelon size. They're delicious, they're really refreshing. Uh, I did a video tasting this a while back, so I'll try to link you guys. But uh, when they're ready, they should become this really bright orange to a gold color. So. This is far from being ready, but I highly recommend if you can grow melons, this is one of the variety. Okay, as I mentioned, this is a pain strainer and they're protecting my pears from the birds. So the birds have gotten to a lot of the pears and those that are left, I cover them up and that seems to be working. So it's been a week now and they're still <laughs> good, not damaged. And then here I have some more melons. This is a younger one. So I'm also covering that one as well. Then my Linzo crossed with Sangria. These things are really cool. They, they, they grow really low, produce a ton of pods. And it doesn't matter if, if uh, the temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll still produce. So it's a good variety to grow in extreme heat. 
These are the normal Linzo. The rabbits have gotten to these. So they've eaten, you see there? They top my plant. So that's why these are so much behind. And then those back there, this is the bed that I've been testing with. And that's the reason why the, the peppers are like so much behind. And here is the sangria, or the Linzo cross with the sangria. Beautiful variety, lots and lots of peppers. So enough for me to use like every single day. They're really cool. Um, they point towards the sky and uh, produce a ton of pods. And as you can see, they, they're producing like crazy and it is almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So it's a beautiful pepper plant. Produce a lot, tastes great. It tastes very tropical. So uh, when you look at them, they will, you would think that they taste like Thai varieties, but they don't. They taste very sweet, tropical, and they have very few seeds, and they're very hot. Okay, and that is the Santaka, a Japanese variety. And uh, those over there are my ghost variety. I'll show you that later when they produce pods. And here is another Linzo cross with Sangria. That one's doing really, really well. So I've been taking care of that one. This is just a test right here that came out of Mini Hydro. And these are my white tie. I grow this every season because my family really enjoy these. So uh, it is the a staple in my, in my garden. All right, and this is my lemon starburst bed. And uh, yeah, the, da the damage has been done by the rabbit, so that's why they're so slow. I may take a few of these out and put them in, into their own pot, and I'm gonna try to, you know, nurture them and see if they can grow uh, much bigger. Because these varieties can get really, really big, but um, because of the setback and all that stuff from the rabbits, it's, it's not doing very well. And then this one here is actually even producing for a plant so small. So uh, it's surrounded by my herb. So I, I guess it's probably competing for nutrients and stuff like that. But uh, the pods are actually really cool and nice shape. This is actually one I prefer. Look at that. See that nice shape? Like a saucer with a tail. I, I usually go for those to save seats. And then here is some hornets, also not looking good either. So um, I'll just leave them alone and see how, how well they would do later. You see in there, there, that's the bunny right there. So this guy, I think he was one of the litter that was recent and uh, he's gotten big. So most of uh, his siblings probably moved out except him, he's right there just hanging out. And he's gotten pretty big. I think he's probably five, six weeks old. So he's hanging out here, chewing my plant. Killed a few. Anyway, um, here are some Sugar Rush Peach. And uh, some of my uh, torch. The torch this year came out a different color. So uh, the torch last year was uh, um, red. And this one here came out peach. So that is really exciting. So I'm gonna save some seeds for those. Man, they, they look really good. I, I can't wait to try them. So here's a few. And Sugar Rush Peach is back here. Uh, producing like crazy. The fruits are so heavy that it's causing the plant to hang over. I need, I wanted to stake this up, but then I just, <laughs> got carried away and uh, I didn't do anything to them so they keep falling over but there are lots and lots of sugar rush you see here so many fruits from the sugar rush and I have a, a sweet misery here up in the front they're really spicy great variety as well and look at the sugar rush guys they're producing like crazy see they're so heavy that it's just forcing the plant to hang forward because the pods are really big look at this the great variety good to make uh, um, salsa and some hot sauce some mild one okay and my cucumbers are coming to the an end that's pretty much it to the for the life cycle It's getting really really hot so that they they're not gonna grow too much more 
and this one here is what I'm saving for seeds man look at this thing it's humongous oh. you see that it is it's like a few pounds I would say it's really really big so that's how big they'll get if you let if you let them grow fully and then here I have some Tyranos from Jay and these varieties really really cool it produced some pointing to the sky and this is actually the regular Serrano see and then compared to the cross I grew them side by side so that people can see the difference so I've, I've tried a few of these they're actually really good love the crunch flavor and the heat not too much heat just enough and here's the other one that grows downward, but it looks much different than the uh, the regular Serrano. See, these are regular Serranos. And then here I have some sweet apples. And look at that one. The rabbits ate it. So I had a few really nice looking fruits on these. Uh, I was going to pick them, but the rabbits really got into them first and ate them all. So I think these are really good and sweet. That's why... They don't mind, they just eat them. They don't really eat the hot peppers. All right, and here are some Kangsta Red and some Texas Chocolate Bonnet. Looking really cool there. And some are, man, look at this one. This one looks crazy. That's the Texas Chocolate Bonnet. These are Kangsta Red. These are, these were, were Kangsta Red from a red pod, so they're one of the parents were yellow so sometimes they will turn out yellow okay some sweet bell peppers right there those are California wonders and I'm gonna go through this quickly because uh, this camera is gonna overheat soon so uh, tomatoes look at this guys berries crazy cherry lots of tomato I haven't been picking them so they're all over the place okay and the last bed has a uh, Kangsta yellow and these guys are really awesome looking peppers look at this look, look at that you see one of my favorite variety this year it's just so beautiful so there are lots of fruits underneath all right guys so that is pretty much it for this update um, there's not a lot going on except there's uh, the pods are ripening and I'm gonna get some of these for seed saving especially this one here beautiful pepper there so as far as fertilizing for the past few weeks I haven't done much because I've been so busy but uh, continue that one a week kind of routine and it should be fine uh, I use fish emulsion and if you have worm casting there's nothing that can beat that just throw some in here and water them in or you can make some tea out of those but um, that's pretty much it I keep it simple and um, it's just the heat that is just affecting the peppers right now. So uh, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.